welcome to the 14th instalment of this journey across the Premier League series, in which we drop the fascinating history behind all the grounds in the Premier League. Today, we're off to Riyadh to talk about the fascinating history about Al Newcastle, formerly known as Newcastle United. Hey, fellas, look what I found in my pocket. Look, a year's salary right here. That's what I call them fun coupons. See that? A fun coupon. Come on, let's look down be. And their ground of the Prince GM Sport City. It's time to go back in time to the late 19th century when the site of today's St James's Park was nothing other than a patch of grazing land next to the Georgian era Leeser's Terrace built for the High Society of Newcastle and is still there today as accommodation for university students. The site was also near the gallows of the city to which a stand within the stadium gets its name of the Gallagher End. Football would be played at the ground prior to Newcastle United forming, who would come along in 1892 with the merger of Newcastle West End and the East End Football Clubs. A redevelopment of the Gallagher End would happen in 1899, taking the capacity of the stadium to 30,000, and by 1905 the capacity of the stadium had doubled to 60,000. In 1930 the club would get our Scottish lad Archibald Leach to draw up plans for a new double-tiered stand within St James's Park. However, that age-old nemesis development, planning permission, would get in the way, and by the end of it all, all that was achieved was adding a roof to the existing Leeser stand. Nothing much would happen to the stadium until the 1950s, when the stadium would get floodlights, except these lights were a little bit different. They were friggin' huge, standing at nearly 60 metres, or the height of a Bruno Fernandes penalty. The club continued to um and ah about moving from St James's Park until 1971 when things started to get better when plans were passed to redevelop the stadium with phase one being a new East Stand opening in 1972. It was in the late 80s when the tragic events of the Bradford Stadium fire happened and the result of this saw Newcastle's Edwardian West Stand condemned to the bulldozers as it was seen as a potential risk to public safety being teared down in 1987 with it being replaced by a new Milburn stand opening in 1988. The stand was named after club legend Jackie Milburn who was part of the team that last won a major trophy for Newcastle in 1955. Just let that sink in. Well, unless you count the Anglo-Italian Cup as a major trophy. A big achievement, celebrations, listen, slight, slightly over the top but good luck to him. It was in the 1990s when seismic change would come to St James's Park when the duo of John Hall and Kevin Keegan would become chairman and manager, supercharging Newcastle up the league and with that the redevelopment of the stadium to include the John Hall stand in 1993. There were even attempts by Hall to move the club to a completely new San Siro-esque ground in Leeser's Park, a few hundred metres away from the current stadium. However, these were scuppered by local objections. As 1997 came along, so did a new chairman, Freddie Shepherd, who would further expand the stadium to the stadium we have today, fully opening in 2000, holding 52,000 fans to the displeasure of away fans who have to climb the equivalent of Mount Everest to get to the away section. Along came Mike Ashley in 2007 and the never-ending bashing of him by Newcastle fans. You own the club, you fucking parasite. Why aren't you here? Where are you? Where are you? We thought it would be a laugh to rename the stadium the Sports Direct Arena, which was about as painless as trying on shoes in Sports Direct. Now we arrive at 2021, and with Middle Eastern countries buying football clubs seen as trendy, the folks from Saudi Arabia have swooped in to snatch up Newcastle. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. To the pleasure of the Geordies, so get ready for the inevitable expansion of St James's Park to get more bums on seats to watch football icons such as John Joe Shelby or Joel Linton in the Championship. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and join us as we carry on our journey across the Premier League. What are your experiences of St James's Park? Feel free to leave a comment below, I'd love to hear them. Next up, it's that team who is so terrible at the moment, it's not even worth mentioning their name. 
He sits there, plays with a bit of string. Pisses about all the time. That's right, it's Norwich City and their ground of Carrow Road. This has been a civil conversation and I will see you in the next video.